Hey guys, we're talking about the secrets of Atlanta in this one, part two. Uh, in the first video, I brought up the fact that I think looking at old Daytona data and using that as a data point and a data set uh, is potentially a pretty good place to start trying to figure out what the heck we do with Atlanta. In my opinion, that's the important part of the off season. I like entering this year, we can look at stuff from any other race. When I understand the clashes this week, I got another class video coming out previewing that as well. But like, this is the main anomaly of the current NASCAR Cup Series schedule. What the heck do we do with Atlanta? How do we approach this race? Is there a way that we could potentially, you know, look at it that we aren't looking at already? Do we want to focus on certain place differential plays more than others? Yada, yada, yada. And so I've, I've been looking at this Daytona data and specifically from 2001 to the first Daytona 500 in 2000 or the Daytona 500 in 2010 because post that was the repave. And uh, I wanted to look specifically at races that are racing similar to Atlanta, racing, you know, very much of where the car has to be set up correctly, leaning more into driver who are good at understanding what to do in situations, be successful in these races, and so on and so forth. And I'm specifically, in this video, wanting to look at starting position. Now, yes, we do have the potential... Uh, fantasy points these guys score, but we're missing the fast laps like there's no way to pull that and so uh, This is our best guess of kind of how they would perform and for roughly like place differentials what matters at plate races Yes, you know finishing position and everything But for the most part we can tell that if, <clears throat> that if somebody started like 23rd and finished second he was most likely Boston Well, I don't think we have to go uh, and get like truly like worry about what about these fast laps? What about this and that so like this is the first this is 2010 Daytona 500 when McMurray uh, won it when we dealt with a lot of potholes and stuff like that. And so uh, just in the race, ran into a lot of yellows and stuff. And the main thing that I want to talk about is this data set that I went ahead and was looking at and messing with earlier today, which actually got pretty interesting as, as I went along and added races to it. And so yet again, we're looking at the Daytona races, specifically from 2001 to the first race in 2010. So like clearly two 09 is the second race of Daytona, 109 is the Daytona 500, so you can just see each year plus what event it was, plus the four Atlanta races that we've seen for Cup. Now, I'm specifically looking at the Cup Series at this point <clears throat> because I think that's the one I primarily want to focus on. I think we'll figure out, or not figure out, but we can use a lot of what we learn from the Cup Series for the Trucks and Xfinity, specifically because the Truck Series, like this year, it's all just a bunch of baboons, man. It's a bunch of amphibians running around the track. None of these teams have any idea what they're doing. <laughs> Thor Sport is not Thor Sport anymore. We got Freedom Racing in the 76, buying some old GMS stuff. Like, it's just so many anomalies. Like, it's we just have to see what happens. Same thing with Xfinity. So many guys moving around. I really want to nail in, what what is the Cup Series doing? We'll worry about the other stuff later when it, when it gets down to it, when we get closer to it. And what I did is I went ahead and looked at the So these are the starting positions, clearly on the left side. We can probably scoot scoot these guys down maybe not that much i'd like to see starting i'm very particular i'd like to see i could just put start actually doot, doot, doot. all right so let's move that down that's fine that's better so this is the average finish for atlanta just the four atlanta races now i understand this might be pretty broad strokes and stuff but this is another thing i was just mainly curious about this i was like is there any point or anything that is anywhere near similar to this atlanta versus old daytona on just finishing position nothing else so this is just the average fin finishing position for the four atlanta races this is average finish of daytona and this is the average finish of all of these races combined and i think at this point we have i don't know quite a lot what is a e to double a however many races that is that is the the point we're looking at one thing that i was really hesitant on trying to not do was manipulate the data into what i wanted it to show and specifically is like this race, this race, a couple of the 06 races, certainly the mid 2000s, and certainly a lot of the summer races were races that I viewed when I rewatched them and paid attention was races that I viewed specifically being very similar to what New Atlanta is. However, I didn't want to go and look at uh, these races and just scratch out all the other ones. I didn't want to dilute the data or like be selective on the data that I was bringing in. I wanted to bring it all in to see if, if I was being biased by just looking at those specific races or whatever and stuff. And as I was putting these in, when we look specifically, especially really towards from the first race in 2010 to the 
second race in 2006, these these data points in and of themselves, or just these data points between these and New Atlanta, were like shockingly similar. As I was going through, we were seeing that, and even now you can still see like this isn't as crazy as you think. There's <clears throat> my entering this. I wanted data. I was curious if data points would be within three and five numbers of each other because that's three to five positions. That's not drastically huge. If you want to be more extreme, we're looking. We're trying to find similarities between two to three. Starting position points, in my opinion. I was just happy if I could find five, you know, an average number between three or five. That's mainly what I was looking at. And I was shocked by how similar some of these were, and then specifically how shocked it was in, in terms of just average finishes of in general. Like, for example, the pole sitter and stuff, right? Like, when I looked at these races here in Atlanta, like, your average finisher of the pole sitter or your average finish of the pole sitter yes is clearly going to be you know scoring well because we have two winners and then 15th and 18th so it's not going to like drop off the face of the earth but when you look at everything together like we're seeing the pole sitters score pretty well back then on average it's them in third place actually uh you know being some of the better finishers and actually being the top dogs in these event which as I said, when I was starting with not the entire data set, but just from 06 to 10, it was even higher. These two, these numbers and the, the top three was pretty huge. Why is that important? Because when we look at these races here, we have several races that it was Stewart, Earnhardt, and just other guys starting up front who scored well. There was even situations of like 2000, like the Daytona 500 in 02. Uh, actually, it's 0. It would be the second race in 01. Like Sterling Marlin started on the pole led laps early and then blew an engine, you know, didn't finish well. A lot of these instances of these guys fin of not finishing the race were either mechanical fires or, yeah, sure, being caught up in wrecks and stuff because you had years of where, like, the fucking 30 from RCR with, like, Jeff Green or stuff like that would, like, start first and they would just they couldn't finish well. But I was actually quite shocked by how well some of these data points go. If we're just looking at color coordination here, like, this is so fucking weird. This is strange. Like, why is 8th getting just absolutely railed? 8th? But now in Atlanta, old Atlanta, like, you know, this isn't me saying, like, don't play the eighth guy, but this is just, like, I didn't expect eighth place to just be fucked up and down, up and down the street and sideways in, like, most situations. Like, that, that's weird. Top three, hmm, that's kind of more sussy than I thought it would be. A lot of the safer place differential plays come from, primarily from the 20s in both these situations. And the guy starting last isn't going to fuck you over too much. Outside of, I believe this is Gregson wrecking out and finishing. Yeah, this is Gregson either in one of these. I don't remember. It might be here. This might be Gregson. Or people wrecking out. Other than, like, the first guy wrecking out and stuff. Like, this is, like, Austin Hill finishing last. Or potentially Austin Hill in one of these Atlanta races. But, like, that... Let's actually... Hold on. Let's actually freeze. Let's view. Let's freeze. Uh, row. Let's do that. So... When I was viewing this earlier, I was like, man, dude, I don't know if I'm necessarily onto something, but I didn't expect data points to line up this well. I, I thought it'd be, you know, drastically just wildly all over the place like it kind of is today. Like we don't necessarily have like we don't necessarily have like favorite positions or whatever just because wrecks are so chaotic and things of that nature. But here, man, it really does line up. If we start sorting these by we're going to sort. We're going to sort it by average Atlanta finish versus on where they start. <clears throat> you know, it's clearly not that crazy, but we're seeing that, like, we well, don't want to be playing the guys in the back. That's just because they're going to finish poorly. That's just how it is, you know? You know, your mid-20s and stuff are guys who are offering place differential who are typically better, better, or good drivers who can drive through the field and get there. And then the guys starting up front, first, second, third, I think fourth gets fucked over here, but, like, Where's fifth at? Fifth has been wrecked and stuff. But, like, your front runners and stuff, if you're basing on Atlanta, like, you kind of want to play guys up front and then not drastically different place differential plays. Whereas you start looking at Daytona in general, it really wasn't that crazy. It's just, it's really a lot of the same things. You want to play guys up front. Guys in the top ten are going to score well. And then it's your mid-20s. Yeah, sure, we have place differential coming through with, like, 39, because, like, Atlanta hasn't had 39, so, like, we can disregard this one, but it's, like, guys up front, guys in the 20s, guys in teens, and I was just, I was like, man, this shit is, like, 
adding up way better, or at least lining up way more than I thought it was. When we look at average finish in general, and we look at average Atlanta start, like, that's not crazy, man. That is not crazy. Your top three, top three across the board for back in the day and now are, are your highest average finishers. And then yet again, the 20s again. Not a lot of true stack from the back guys and and mid-pack drivers. So, like, guys up front. Basically, in my opinion, it's like you're playing guys in the top 10 for staying up there, running fast, or whatever. And then your place difference plays are coming from the teens and 20s. It's not as drastic as completely stack the back and fuck the front like we do now at current plate races and stuff. And I just found that very fascinating. I was absolutely shocked. When you start diluting or deleting some of these guys, we're going we're gonna to kind of do this in a fell swoop to show you what I was seeing at, like, this here. And I look at how drastically this changes. I remove these. Look how much these line up, man. We really start getting true lineup like within data within as i said numbers that i'm actually very surprised with i'm looking for three to five to really call anything from top front is certainly showing that top three is showing that this is uncanny from like eighth is getting fucked over as i said 10th is like lined up uh, a bit spread out more than i want 14 to 19 that's five that's interesting you know, and then really, like, like, these 20 guys, these 20 positions are within three points across the board. Really, I mean, we got, like, 22 to 17 here. Across, back of the field, we're all within, like, basically three. I didn't expect that coming into this. This was not what I was expecting to see. And as I, was, as I said, when I looked specifically, like, new Atlanta or current Atlanta now to, like, just the prime Daytona dates I, I wanted to necessarily look at before we all got kind of crazy and stuff was there when you start even removing other races to where like guys up front got wrecked out and stuff it moves it even closer like this is this is like wild i didn't expect this at all i don't know this this is more so like man dude look what i found when i was kind of just like goofing around looking at data points and stuff and so you know kind of building on top of what we talked about last time with the in the atlanta video trying to figure out what i want to do trying to figure out where i want to go or build lineups towards looking at average finish, kind of weighing that and understanding that and it's not, you know, a one-to-one -one showing of the DraftKings points that these guys would score, but it gives you a good indication of where they would be based on finishing position that you want to score, that you want to be with. Man, dude, it's, it's, it's pretty wild, man. It's pretty, pretty wild. And then you might be, Looking at it, or lastly, I want to talk about, like, when you look at these guys together, and you look at how similar these these things are. So this is the average finish of, or what did I have this sorted by? Hold on. All right, sorry. It's because I, I paused this to, to make this sheet, and then I was like, what, what data am I even looking at here? I totally forgot. So everything that we've just been going over of when I'd sort these things to show you the finishing position, I just took that and just made another sheet for it. And, like, this is the, um, I just went blank again. What the hell is this? <laughs> what is this? Oh, yeah. It's the, uh, so, I'm, sort, I'm, shorting, I'm sorting by the average finish based on position. And so, the next page is showing the position ranked by uh, the average finish that we're looking at. And it's pretty, it's pretty insane, man. The top three. You got a good chance of finish. You got a good chance of finishing up front, and you got a good chance of scoring well. But like, look at how similar some of these, some of this stuff lines up. The back half of the field, which we have, I'm including all the way back to 43. Some people might not like that. Some people might. But like, look how awkwardly eighth is. That's that's insane. How bad eighth performs on average? It's crazy that like you'll have just how bad. So it's so these things lined up, and I was just shocked beyond belief. But Anyway, so I'm, I'm just trying to find something to look at, something to build more, just to have an idea or some other starting point for Atlanta versus just showing up and, like, really not having a clue on how to build lines. Like, even last year, you know, second year, we've had several races there between all three series. It's still very much unknown. We were like, man, or at least I was like, man, it, it, it's pretty wild seeing, you know, 
the guy who started first win the race and score well, you know, and be like first and second was optimal in this race. That that's pretty crazy. And then like, man, is it crazy? You know, when I see this type of racing that is very similar to the old style, uh, man, maybe it's not as crazy as, as I first thought it was. And it's at least for me, I see it as like, man, I, I really do need to try and rethink on how I want to approach Atlanta. So like I view this, I see this when I'm there in person, man, like, I'm probably going to want to play a lot of guys up front and probably a lot of uh a lot of guys in in the uh a lot of guys in the mid middle portion of the of the speedway and really just not even worry about the back half really the back third of the field man it's almost oops someone's calling me it's really uh it's really just focusing on you know the first two thirds of the field pretty much and that's probably way more aggressive than I first figured I probably would have been a approaching this stuff because i've been very much you know i gotta play guys in back in case we have a big wreck now i haven't had a big wreck yet and i still think at some point we're gonna have one where the leader actually ends up taking people out because we do have a situation where we lose a lot of leaders blowing tires getting involved in the wreck and a lot of wrecks are coming from the front part of that track but it's you know uh, according back to like third seventh tenth and we take out those guys and we necessarily haven't had leaders be taken out um or that take out a lot of people like the whole LaJoy when LaJoy messed up and crashed when he was up front, he was technically like in second or third. I think it was in second on third when he technically crashed out and he went up in the outside lane and really didn't collect a lot of people and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. So this is just me kind of messing around and, and trying to find different points to look at. Like what else can we use to look at Atlanta versus just the four races and stuff. And so this is another aspect and I just keep repeating myself. Whatever the case may be, you get the point of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to just figure out just different way to approach Atlanta, man. And uh, as I go about this, and if it really is trending in, in the direction of racing like how I think it's going to race, which is this type of racing, man, the amount of lineups that I do want to build when we potentially do have a big rack up front is probably going to start dwindling because I really got to start focusing on positions that are starting up front and mid pack and not really necessarily building for gigantic wrecks and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, I just want to make this real fast for you. Maybe it helps you. Maybe it doesn't. But uh, this is for me, the question that I want to figure out before other people figure it out. What can we do at the new Atlanta? How can we build for new Atlanta? And uh, how can I build to just figure out Atlanta? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.